welcome and thank you for joining me. My name is Liz and this is the Castle Handmade Crochet Podcast. Castle Handmade is the name of my business. So you will find me on Instagram, Ravelry, um, Facebook, anywhere else on the web as Castle Handmade. And as I said, my name is Liz. I am coming to you from the Southern Highlands in New South Wales, Australia. So welcome. Uh, this is episode number four of my podcast. So if you are joining for the first time, please forgive the rustiness and <laughs> the um, nervousness that I show in a lot of my podcasts. Uh, hopefully it gets better over time. And if you are joining me for um, another time, if you've watched it before, thank you. Uh, so grab a beverage, just some type of cold or warm drink and sit down with your crochet and enjoy my little chat about all things crochet. Now, I hope you are doing well wherever you are in the world. There's lots going on at the moment, um, some not so nice things happening. Um, and I just want to acknowledge that. And I really hope that things do calm down again. Um, and for anyone that's suffering at the moment, um, you know, my heart goes out to you and my thoughts are with you. Here in Australia, we've got a lot of things going on. Uh, a lot of people are recovering from uh, the major floods that we had in different areas. So they're currently cleaning up and um, getting things back to a normal, well, as normal as they can get. Um, so lots going on all over the world. But this is just a little space where we can forget about those things and talk and listen and indulge in um, what is my favourite uh, craft, which is crochet. Now, I actually <laughs> wasn't sure about whether or not I should record this because I don't have any finished projects to show you. I don't have any uh, whips, so works in progress to show you. And I don't have any future makes to show you either. Um, the last couple of weeks has been a, like busy um, just on the business side of things. Um, I've been prepping for a large fibre festival that we were holding here in New South Wales and I was going to be a vendor and also I was running a workshop. Unfortunately, due to the amount of rain that we had, the venue um, was just going to be unsuitable for hosting the event and so that's been postponed till later in the year, which has meant that a lot of my time <laughs> I've spent preparing and doing things, um, getting ready for this event, um, it's been a bit of a waste because now I, ah, I don't need to be prepared until October, which anyway, which has meant that um, I've not got much to show you today. I've also been working on some new designs. Um, so whilst I have been crocheting, um, and working on some new patterns and, and doing up some new swatches. I actually can't show you them uh, in case they are picked up as um, as new patterns and I need to work on those. So I'll be able to show you them if they become a published pattern, but until then, um, I just like to keep them to myself. Um, so I can't show you that either. <laughs> so I actually thought what I would do would be a little bit different to how I've done the other podcasts and I actually just want to show you some of the things that I was preparing for the Fibre Festival. So I, um, I put together a lot of kits that um, are my original patterns and then the materials that you need to create those items. So I thought I might show you some of my designs that are published in current magazines. So I thought I would show you those and explain what was in the kits and, and how, um, you know, what's in those and what, what they entail. And then I also thought I would show you some of the project bags that I make. So I uh, do a bit of sewing and I make project bags that I then sell in my store. So I've been busy working on those, building up a bit of a stock ready for Fiberfest. So I thought I might show you those as well. Um, 
I don't want this to become a real salesy podcast. Um, so instead, I'd like you to look at it as just me showing you some of my designs uh, and, you know, some of the crafty things I've been working on. I, um, yeah, anyway, I hope that's how it comes across. <laughs> um, like I said, I really didn't have much to show you um, in regards to actual items that I've been working on in the last two weeks because of all this. So um, I'll just have another sip of tea. Mm. I um, I had a couple of questions last week uh, regarding the, oh, a couple of weeks ago, the last podcast that was, um, about the cardigan I was wearing. So yes, that's a cardigan that I've made. It is a design by Sandra from Nomad Stitches uh, and it's called the Candelaria, Candelaria cardigan. She's just brought out another design, which is the same pattern, but it's a pullover, so a jumper instead of a cardigan. Um, so if you look back on last episode, you'll see me wearing a cardigan and I forgot to mention um, what the design was. So I should probably mention what I'm wearing today. This is a, oh, this is called the Coronet Shawl. And this is actually one of my designs. So um, it's made using a four ply yarn. This yarn that I've got here is 100% alpaca. That's why you'll see it's nice and fuzzy and furry. Um, so it's a crescent shaped shawl. And then it's got um, a lace, lacy sort of an edging around the, around all the edge. So that's the coronet shawl, which is um, one of my designs. Okay, well, I might get started with the very first um, magazine published uh, design that I had. So my very first um, magazine published design was uh, last year in June, July, and that was in the Homespun magazine. Now, for those of you in Australia, you will know that this is um, one of our, you know, one of the main um, craft magazines. So it's called Australia Homespun, Australian Homespun, sorry. And it's a craft magazine, so it is not just crochet. It's lots of different crafts. There's a lot of um, patchwork and sewing, embroidery, um, lots of different things. And in this pattern, or in this magazine, which is the June, July edition, there is my hot water bottle cozy. And hopefully you can see that okay. So um, I was asked to design um, a hot water bottle cozy, which was really lovely of them to ask me because it was actually one of my um, ideas in mind. I wanted to, to make one of these anyway. So when they asked if that's something I'd be interested in, I jumped at the chance. And this is the design here. So you'll see that it's got some raised, um, oh, got little bits of things all stuck to it. Um, so you can see that it's got this um, design here, like a bit of a zigzag design that's created using um, front post stitches. And then it's got a ribbed neck. Uh, and I have, I've used like a button closure at the bottom so that you can easily take the hot water bottle um, in and out uh, from there. So that was going to be one of the kits that I was selling at Fiberfest. It All these kits are available on my website if you do happen to really like them and you wish to purchase them. Um, but yeah, so this kit came with the magazine. <laughs> well, you need the, the magazine for the pattern. Um, and then it was with the materials. So um, three balls of beautiful wool and the buttons as well to go along with that. So that was one of my, or well, that was my first design in um, in a magazine. And then um, my next design, which came out at a very similar time, was um, my next design was for some textured washcloths. So that you'll notice, oh, you may already know that um, pattern, stitch pattern there is called the waffle stitch pattern so 
This one here is a like a weave pattern again made using front and back posts and this one here which is a diagonal weave I'm not sure if you could see that well so uh, I came up with the idea of um, created creating some like really nice textures and um, using those as washcloths uh, they're made in cotton um, so great for wash or dis dishcloths uh, I think that doing different um, stitches is a really great way to uh, for beginners especially to branch out and try some new things and to try some new stitches so washcloths work out to be a great little way of practicing stitches and um, you get an idea about whether or not you like doing the stitch but also whether you like the finished result as well so washcloths are great because you can then gift them um, or use them yourself um, and then you can decide after that whether or not you want to launch into a larger project using that stitch pattern. So I find them really great for beginners and a lot of my, a lot of my customers make different um, washcloths and dishcloths um, and it's just, yeah, a great way of practicing stitches. So those washcloths, that set of three is in this fabulous magazine, which made its debut last year. So this is brought out by Australian Homespun, so the same magazine makers as the one that I just showed you with my hot water bottle. Uh, the difference is this is just crochet. So last year they um, decided to put together a magazine that was solely crochet patterns and they also put together a magazine that was just knitting patterns. So I was fortunate enough to be in their very first debut issue and in there you'll find my washcloths and there's also just a little write-up about me and my designs and a bit about my business in here as well. So here is, let's see, so that there is the washcloths. And I was pretty chuffed because they actually used some of my photos as well. Ones that I'd taken and set up. And there you'll see a little thing about me. It's full of great patterns. There's, and it's great because it's an Australian um, made magazine. So it's full of lots of Australian designed items, which is really good. Um, the Homespun Crochet magazine has since produced a second issue. So this is issue number two. And... For issue number two, I actually had two patterns in this one. So in issue number two, you will find my, oh, sorry about the noise. You will find my summer flower wreath, which is this one here. And you can see the sunflowers on it and there's different leaves and some other little flowers. That was one of my patterns in there. And the second pattern was a string of bunting. So if you can see these flags, that's a long strand of bunting. These are the frangipani, uh, frangipani bunting, I think I called it. So you can see it's got the little uh, flower motif in the center of the flag. And it's made in some pastel colors. So I've put together some kits for these and that's what I was going to be selling at Fibre Fest. So I had kits for the flower wreath, which came with this natural vine wreath, as well as all the cottons that you need to make that. And I also had a kit with, um, with all the, the cottons that you need to make this. So that was, yeah, so they're just... They're all the current um, patterns that I have published in magazines. Um, it was so exciting to have my first pattern published in a magazine and then to have the subsequent ones done as well. Um, and I've got a few in the works that have already been sent to the publishers and have had their photo shoots and things. So um, they'll be coming out a little later this year. Uh, yeah. So that's um, putting together those kits and organising stock and things for 
being a, a store holder at Fiberfest took a lot of my time. Um, like I said, all these items are still available in my store and when I have my own open days here in the studio. Um, these patterns currently are only available in the magazines. Once the, um, once the time period um, lapses and I'm able to publish them um, myself online, they will go up on Ravelry. Um, but I need to check the dates and things of that because they're not, they're still um, exclusive to these magazines at the moment. So yeah, that's the kits that I was putting together. I also sell other kits um, of other patterns that I've written, but ones that I've self-published. So like my coronet shawl that I'm wearing. Um, so all of those are up on Ravelry. Um, my own um, self-published patterns are there. Uh, and if you're in Australia, I have um, my patterns available in a kit form as well on my website. Oh, enough of the selling though. <laughs> I just really wanted to chat to you and show you some of the things I've, I've designed and made. Um, not as a way of trying to push the sales on them, but just to show you some of the varied items that I make. I don't know that I have um, like a real crochet style like I don't typically think you can look at something that's been made by me or designed by me and go oh yeah that's definitely one by Liz I tend to I tend to dabble in lots of different things and so my designs sort of reflect either what I'm doing at the time something I like or the seasons um so yeah I don't think I've got a typical style yet and I don't know that I will, um, just because I do like trying all different things. So um, I like trying different techniques and I always mix up and use different colors and color schemes. And I like making different projects. So um, yeah, there's some designers that just really hone in on one area and focus on one thing. And I think, I think what, what draws me to crochet is the fact that you can branch out and do lots of different things. And so it just seems natural that that's what the things that I design are so varied and different as well. Um, yeah. So anyway, I hope you like the look of those. Um, if you've made any of my patterns and my items, I'd love to hear from you. It's always um, so great when people pop up a picture on Ravelry or um, you know, they pop it up online somewhere and or they send me an email and say, oh, I've just made this. That's really exciting. Um, it's great to see what other people do with my patterns, which is, yeah, really good. Um, now, I mentioned that the other thing I was doing this week was sewing. Um, so I make project bags for you to keep your projects and goodies in. Um, so I thought I'd just show you a little bit, uh, oh, I'll show you the style that I make. At the moment I only sell one type of project bag and it's a drawstring bag. And I try and keep all the fabrics, um, they either have like a wool or a sheep theme to them. Um, just because I'm a big fan of natural fibres and especially Australian wool. Um, so this is one of the fabrics, hopefully you can see those little sheep on there. Now, um, my project bags. They're fairly large, you can fit a fair bit in them. Um, they've got the drawstring, so you can close it up with the drawstring, and then it's also got handles to make it easy to hold. They are quite sturdy in that I use, um, I use like a, why have I forgotten the, the name? It's like an interfacing that, um, gives it a bit more rigidity to the to the bag so it's thicker in this bottom section which then means that you can fold over the top if you want and you can sit that upright on the table and you can have your wool coming straight out of that um, and it just keeps everything nice and tidy so that's the style that um, that I make and then like I showed you there's that fabric there which is one of um, I haven't had it in stock for a while, so that was going to be a new one at Fiberfest. But instead, they'll be up on my website site now and available in my store. And that's the, so it's got a brownie beige sort of background. Got the same fabric, just in a different colorway. 
I'll hold it up so you can see it. This one's got, it's like a dusty blue, oh, piece of cotton there. I'll have to cut that when I finish here. So it's like a dusty blue color. The same sheet. And another fabric that um, I was making the bags out of is this one here with lots of big colorful balls of wool. There's the little coordinating fabric on top. It has little balls of wool as well. And again, the handles and the drawstring. So they're all fully lined. This one here has got a really bright um, orange fabric as the lining to match the wool on the outside. Um, the others, the others I just think have the same spotted fabric that's on the top. That's that same brown. Fully lined, um, all made with quality cotton fabrics and then the cotton drawstrings as well. So all of that has been keeping me quite busy <laughs> the last couple of weeks. So my stock is, oh, my shop's well stocked and I've got lots of kits and things. <laughs> um, yeah, and so other things in regards to actual crochet, um, like I said, I've been working on some new designs. So busy making up swatches and, um, and things like that. And yeah, um, all the things that I mentioned that I was working on in the last uh, episode, um, yeah, I have not even touched or done anything with. So I think there were, oh, there was the leaf and flower garland I haven't touched. There was the Tunisian beanie that, or Tunisian crochet beanie that I'd asked people's opinions on about the colors, what's, what I should, whether I should stay with the colors I was using or if I should change the colors and use something else. Um, I haven't touched that since that episode so I haven't made any decisions about that one um yeah and that's a bit disappointing but hopefully you've enjoyed <laughs> this episode um seeing some of the things that I've been up to and taking a look at some of my designs uh, I'd love to know your thoughts um if you liked my designs or um yeah if you had something to say about the project bags uh, yeah, and I hope you're well. I hope you are busy crocheting and working on lots of great projects. Um, let me know uh, what you're working on and um, I hope you have a good next couple of weeks and I will see you again soon. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.